Hello everybody, Togal here and welcome back to another episode of Infinity Wolfed Expert Mode here on the FTOG server. Now it is directly after the last episode when I said that I'm going to be live streaming. So we are, I'm recording this before the live stream that is going to be in the past by the time you watch this. Okay, that's weird. Um, but I wanted to get built something here. Um, that I would like to have and I don't want to wait until when I'm ready to actually record the next episode So I said I'm just gonna do this real quick So I have it and that is I want to make a golden bag of holding and make the enchanted version, but for that I Need a few more enchanted books and I have 16 levels. Let's see here. I could enchant something with level 6 and Okay, let's do that. Whatever I get. I really don't care I just want a few books and where are the essence berries that they are that's cool let me run over there and harvest a few more so I can put them back that should be enough altogether actually I harvest this in a second you guys don't need to watch me harvest essence berries um, and let's get two more books done because we need to make some magic wood and I have four books of wrecking one but apparently they're garbage. Um, <laughs> I get one magical wood with that. And I'm hoping that if I... I need two. That's all I need right now. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to get at least two right now. And if I get more, great. And otherwise, I think once we get the fissure going, we're going to be fine. So what does it take here? So I need four more gold and another bookcase. Oops, that was, a, that was the wrong one. That was an item frame. I said bookcase. All right, and one, two, three, four. Good. So let's put that in here. Like that. So we're going to get one from this. And now we use the other books here. And quite possible that we get more. No, we only get one again. But that's fine. That's all I need is two. And here's the recipe for the golden bag. And we'll get this. And then you combine it in here to make the golden bag of holding with reincarnating one. So what that does is when I die, I keep this golden bag on my bar. And that is what I really wanted. And the other reason I wanted this is that I have a bigger bag, only one. And the other nice thing is I can put these bags into that bag, um, which you cannot do with these. So if I try to put this bag into that one, it doesn't let me, you cannot stack these within each other. The golden bag doesn't care. I think you can have other golden bags of holding in here too, but that is fine. And overall, what I really wanted is, so I have more room. Um, I, I wanna have one bag when I open that, I have access to all the tools and books and stuff like that. And I just wanted to show you guys real quick how you make the reincarnating. And now I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna do today. All right, so I decided I wanna move the machines around a little bit first. And so I took down all the IC2 stuff and put it over here. And I need to move this barrel, but I don't want to take out the 40 stacks of charcoal. And I'd also be like to be able to move the ore and so on. And I decided to make a dolly first. Um, it's been time now that we make a dolly. Let me look it up again, just to make sure I need two sticks, a barrel and some iron and some iron and iron, iron. <laughs> Lots of iron. Okay, so, and let's get this out and stack this real quick. Let's just make this. Uh, first, I gotta make a chest. Need a half slab. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Let's make the barrel first. I didn't even check if I have any more, but hey, you can never have enough barrels. Um, and then now we gotta make this Steve's Carts wheel thingy here. Yeah, reinforced wheels. And we should have everything, no? Oh, of course, I gotta make two more of these. And then this. And it's pretty cool. It's funny that I'm making this right now because in TeamSpeak just now, uh, Brink told us that you can actually move IC2 machines with the dolly. I, I'm gonna definitely try that out later. Um, which means that, you know, there is no chance of you breaking it when you pick it up with the wrench and you see the wrench, it's almost used up from just picking up a few machines. So that's cool. So now I can get this stuff out of the way. Oh, it feels so good having a dolly, guys. <laughs> oh, it's funny. And I can get rid of all these chests and put them over here also, get them out of the way. And I'm gonna excavate this area right here 
Further back, similar to this, um, just different dimensions. And this is going to be our RF area for all these machines that we have here and the next few that are coming up soon. And this right here is going to be the IC2 area. And then I want to set it up that this crusher here is sitting somewhere in this corner really close. And then the IC2 furnace somewhere right next to it. So behind here, behind the walls, then I can set it up so it automatically takes the crushed ore and sends it to the furnace. And then I was even thinking of possibly setting it up so everything that has been done processing comes into this chest. No, I think I'm just going to put it into a chest next to it because what if I need to cook something up that I don't want it to go into the storage system? We'll see. Maybe I'll set up a second furnace, uh, one just for automation and the other one for manual stuff. We'll see. Let me dig all this out and then we'll set it up. So I got a huge mess. <laughs> I made a big hole over here that I don't know yet how I want to set it up. Um, it's going to take me a little longer to figure out how I want to arrange it, but I set up the ICT, uh, IC, IC2 uh, corner a little bit already. You guys see, I made another bat box and two more generators. I would have not made another bat box. I had it here first, but the problem is that the IC2 cables are not uh, microblock ready. So when you put a microblock on top of it, it actually, you know, sticks out. Um, just like if I have it like this, it's sticking out and I don't like that. So what I did is make another bat box and put it here. And these two generators are charging this bat box. And let me show you here. Um, yeah, I should be able. And you guys see the output is coming this way. And that one then runs into this bat box, which of course I gotta go from behind now. I made a little hidden door right here and I'm going to have to set it up here like that. And now it's outputting into this cable. So that is, that is the nicest way I could keep this flush. And I got double the storage now, but of course we got the charcoal here and I don't want to uh, load this by hand anymore. So what I said, I want to show you guys is how I'm handling that. And I'm simply going to use a transfer node for that and put that on here and it's sucking out the charcoal. And we're just going to use um, regular transfer pipes. Now, do I want them to come together? Yeah, why not? So just like that, that is it. Now, every one of these should slowly get the charcoal. And, you know, the thing is that once they're full, this is not going to be a problem anymore. So we've got 37 now, 40. And I, I don't think it burns it that fast that I need to worry about it um, given the speed upgrades, but we'll see here eventually if or not. And then here I simply got the compressor and that fluid solid canning machine. I don't think I'm going to automate them yet, um, but I did want to automate the macerator and the furnace. I was thinking initially of using the crusher, but I think I'm just going to have another ore processing set up in the RF section. I did want to process the majority of my ore with ic2 for now so we'll see how that works out um that's also the reason why i made two more generators because um if i start overclocking these two machines i'm gonna need more power but i wanted to show you guys these chests here i have not used them before a slightly larger chest it's just a chest surrounded with sticks super cheap to make but the cool thing about them is they take up a full block and you can still open them when there is a block above them they have no lid that goes up you guys see that it just you just access it. And I think those are perfect for here. And why did I put a block here? I don't know. Ah, now I gotta get it. <laughs> so now how are we gonna set up this ore processing? I, I do wanna have it toggable. So if I just want something macerated, for example, lapis or whatever, I don't want it to look um, if it can send it somewhere. So the way I figured we can do that is, well, first off, we come from the chest into the macerator. I hope that I come in from the right side that that works, but that's something to figure out. And then of course, we're gonna pull out. Oh boy. We, we're gonna have to try that out. These guys have power. We're gonna have to get one ore real quick and see if it goes from right to left or if they only go from left to right. Whatever, just give me an iron. <laughs> uh, let's put that in here. 
it does. So it did put it in the right slot, and it should macerate this, and then I'm hoping it goes into this furnace here. That it can extract from the left. Are you seriously not done yet? It does work. Okay, I'm, I'm happy. I thought that, you know, maybe I need to go left or right or something, that there's a certain side that this um, gets toggled. So, but I also want to have the option of just sending something to the furnace, for example, sand to make a lot of glass, right? So I figured I'm going to have another chest up here. So just like that. And now we can cover these up because they are microblock ready with these microblocks. And there's going to be now um, one, two, just two. Okay, I'm going to have to get, no, just one. I just need one lever. Let me get that real quick. Because the transfer nodes, when you give them a redstone signal, they, they stop. They don't work anymore. And so now, you know, if I want something just macerated, I can put it in here. I can flip this lever and it's not going to pull it out over here. If anything goes into the furnace, I always want it to get pulled out. There's no reason to keep something from not getting pulled out. So I think that makes sense. Let's test this real quick if it actually works. Not that I screwed the pooch. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's do copper. Um, and now the only other problem is that, well, actually, no, the iron is here. I, I decided not to hook it up directly to the storage here because um, if, I, if, if I want to keep something um, over there, I, can, I don't need to flip a lever or anything. It's also a really long distance. And there's another thing, by the way, guys, I wanted to talk with you. You see how long it takes me to break this? If I put something in this chest glider where there's no spot, I cannot get to this transfer node to pull it back out. And then I found out something that I had no idea it works, guys. And that is something why we're changing this here now. We're going to get rid of this, this, and this. This is probably going to be an ender chest one day or something like that. But for now, we don't need it because, check this out, I had no idea this worked. Oops, I think that's because there is a, another micro block cover here. I don't know why it was there. Hmm, whatever. We got it, and now we can put the key back there. Because check it out, let me just take all kinds of willy-nilly stuff, whatever. You guys see, I got these items here. You don't, you just right-click the controller, and it takes everything that it can store in in here instantly i there's no need i come in here i just spam this and now everything is gone that it knows where to put it i think that is genius that's the reason by the way i took the salad out from here because it kept taking my salad every time i right click this and and gets rid of it so let's check here real quick this should be sitting in here that's exactly what i want so now for example for lapis i can take this out but if i want to keep it going you see it already sucked it out and put it in here and works so it looks a little naked back here, you know, because you can't see anything. So I'm going to, what I actually want to find is maybe I'm going to use micro blocks or some kind of a color. Something with arrows would be really cool. I'd like to have an arrow pointing down this way, an arrow pointing that way, just so you can see the workflow kind of thing. That would be cool. But I'm going to have to check if I find something. It is two days later in real life, guys. I did not do much um, besides have two really fun and awesome live streams. The first night we got six skeleton uh, wither skeleton heads and it was super easy. I made this cleaver here and killed six wither skeletons and each one of them gave me a head. Uh, this one has beheading 80%. And then I also put some lapis on there. Some people in the live stream said to go ahead and do that. And it works really well. So, and that night we summoned two withers. And it was a death fest. <laughs> Let me show you guys. It was bonkers. Uh, server tops, death. I am up to 39 death. I'm right here uh, up starting from Grayson on. Uh, these people were at the, um, the wither kill fest and you can clearly see the difference in kills renovate is the uh, next highest one with 12 and yeah it was crazy but I, it was a lot of fun and the next uh, day yesterday i started streaming on beam guys i wanted to mention this i'm gonna s keep on screaming on 
streaming screaming <laughs> on beam because beam is i think a better platform a for me the streamer um because there is almost no delay like four seconds so if you guys talk to me i only need to wait four seconds to read it um and it also better for you guys because you can choose your quality so people with a low uh, bandwidth internet connection can actually now watch my streams i know a few people uh, wrote on the forums they can't um they had problems with beam and so on but just send them a support ticket let them know what's going on uh they the the admins seem to be very helpful over there they even hopped in our stream and welcomed us and everything it was super awesome but what i want to do now is oh sorry and the the second stream yesterday on beam we worked on the spider farm that i finished today uh finally and we'll probably head over there later so i can show you what's going on um and then i was working on the roof but this has been now ready for a couple hours i just put the the crusher back over here the thermionic fabricator and thanks to brink now i know that when you put a lever in front of this and you flip it on check this out even tells you here disabled this machine is being disabled by a redstone signal so that seems to be working now and i added four more uh culinary generators to just get more power if we need it then i have the carpenter and the moisten over here and we had the other two diamondite electron tube so i made another laser just so this stuff here is a little bit faster oh these are done these i needed to make a lot because of the uh let stone flux that you need two per six i think two per six two per eight i can't remember uh right there per six you need two and the uh, lead plates it's not expensive you just gotta make a bunch of these so i made some in um reserve now so we have enough oh yeah and then over here i just have pulling out of this chest to input and i had it first on the side but you need to input you can only pump into the rock crusher from the top pulling out works and then over here there's nothing special this is how the power is hooked up pulling the salads out of this barrel very very basic stuff and of course this time over here i set up a endless water source for these two and this i did not know it requires a diamond pickaxe to make one of these world in action upgrades. It's all right. You don't make that many. <laughs> so now everything is done here and I want to add a new machine that we're going to need here. Um, it's, it's time to make that one. And that is the uh, sawmill from thermal expansion. And for that one, I need to make uh, some circuits here. One to be this one right there. And it should be really quick. Endless water is really nice. No more worries about buckets. There we go. We got this. And the basic machine casing. That's why I wanted to do this on camera for the first time. Because I haven't done this. You make like this. Um, it's, it's just different. I don't mind it at all. You know, when you go up in the... In the... In the... Uh, machine frames to the hardened or whatever you just need different items you know i think you always need to let's just uh, check real quick machine frame so this one here takes a refined circuit and a golden chipset and an electrum gear these two are the same all right three different here and the same here so the first two are always the same just the other parts go up and i believe and that is something we definitely need to keep in mind, guys. Um, I don't think that these recipes here work. I've seen people in their videos talk about it, that you cannot upgrade them. That's something I'm going to test in single player here one of these days. If one of you guys knows for sure, please let me know in the comments. But I've seen people try to upgrade from the basic to the hardened one. And it's also possible that it works now. Maybe that was one of these... Um, um, recipe desyncing issues that been happening in this mod or in this pack and maybe it's been fixed already and the doors by the way i on purposely am not completely hiding i could make them blend completely in but i kind of like it this way better oh yeah and this over here i changed up you guys remember the chest was up here this one was there and this one was there i didn't like it it was too spread out so i just brought them in and just ran the the cables a little bit different in the back you know, instead of coming from here to here, I just go underneath the same here. And this one up here just 
splices into that one from the side. So it's more compact. I, I like that a lot better. So let me wait out this um, assembly table and then we can set up the sawmill. Actually, you know what? While this is going, we need to find us some great wood because we're going to get started with magic here. Um, here in one hour, we actually have a community project. We're going to build our nether hub today um, because we're going to need to worry about... Oh, totally forgot. Um, but I'll show you this in more detail here, the wall. When, when we actually start with magic up here. But I started playing around here with a with a wall. And I know Mike... Ah, there they are. Mike planted some great woods. So I'm going to come over here and take these two down. I'm guessing that was him. Oh, there's lots of them. Um, Is this one or two? That's two. Well, I'm just going to take down one. I don't... That's more great wood than I'll ever need. And hopefully I get some saplings here in a minute. Um, the great woods, the leaf decay is very slow. There's nothing you can do. You just got to wait. Um, and I'll see you in the base with this wood. And then we'll put the sawmill up. This seems to be bugged here. Um, it's not using any more power. But the lasers are not turning off. It's kind of funny. Here's our machine frame. And I got the rest all over here. So that guy... Oh, I did not make everything else. What am I missing? So, mill. There we go. I'm missing just two planks. Okay, so I do have everything. Let's put these two here. We need an axe. And we need this guy. And we got our sawmill. I'm really happy about this. It's a, it's a big thing, I, I think, in this mod pack to have that. Because, well, you can now use the fancy woods. And I think this guy we're going to put right here. And, of course, I do want to have a chest. We need a chest underneath this one for sure. Because um, you get so much extra wood when you do that. So we're going to get one and eight. Make this guy another one. I, I really like the slight, uh, slightly larger chest. Um, I... Even though it makes the, the wall even f more flat than it already is. There's, everything is completely flush. I gotta, I gotta figure something out how to, how to make this more, I don't know, lively. It's so plain, my base. I, I'm not very happy about it right now. Um, but I'll figure it out eventually. We need some kind of a decoration. And here, underneath, I don't think I'll need an input chest, really. At least not now. So, you just ex put everything down there, and we're going to start with 30 of these. And what do we get? Okay, so we also get this. And eight of these make us these compressed sawdusts, which is really cool. Because we'll need those for the plastic sheets. We're getting close to this. Oh, you also need it for the binder component. Wow. So, one electrical steel, two of those, and eight, st six stone dust. And that just makes you one single uh, conduit facade. Um, oh, actually, it makes more. Never mind. So that's going to make us four. Because it takes eight of these and you get four per. So that's okay. So now we got the great wood planks. And let's get these out. Because I don't really have an order on how I want to do things, guys. But... We, we got to get started with all four types of magic. Botania, Thomcraft, Witchery, and Blood Magic. Because they each need something from each other. And we also need them for all the other um, tech machines and so on. So let's see here. Table. Um, table, table. Where is the Thomcraft table? I want to get that done here. Right there. So I'm going to need some planks. We're going to need three tables altogether. So like this, one for the workbench and two for the research table. So let's get this out of here. And I think for... Mm -hmm -hmm. I think now we're going to put this on top also. Let's find out what the inscriber tools cost. Inscriber on insc uh, inscription. What? Or is there just scribing 
tools. Yes, my bad. Scribing tools. We'll need glass vials. Those are cheap. Ooh, mana glass. Can I make this with something else? No. See, right there. So we cannot even advance in um, Tomcraft to get the scribing tools without having mana glass. So we got to get Botania going also. But let's check if we can make the thom thom meter thermometer. There we go. What are you gonna cost me? Also mana glass. So we gotta get going with Botania. And once are you anything special? No. I think that that's what I'm gonna do first here. Um, let me get a crate out in real quick here because I'm gonna keep all this on me. I don't wanna get this away, but I'm gonna need inventory space here in a second. Or when we charge our wands, because I want to show you guys this first before we continue. And I don't need this. Oops, right there. And I'll take this with me just in case. Okay, cool. And I do have a bunch of iron nuggets. Um, TJ has found out a way of making endless iron with Thomcraft, and it has to do with the crucible. Um, and you get more metallum by putting iron nuggets into a crucible than it costs you to make a new iron nugget. So you you can just stand there and keep tossing them in there and you make an endless amount of iron nuggets. Hopefully it won't get fixed by the time we have a crucible because I'd like to make use of that. It'd be kind of cool to have lots and lots of mana, uh, iron, so I guess I'm going to make six, because that's how many I have right here. So we're going to make six of these wands. And I just wanted to show you first how I'm going to charge these. Um, if you're watching my videos for a while now, you know that I don't like going around and looking for nodes and charging them. Because I think it is a lot easier to just kill mobs. <laughs> and the mobs have a chance of... Oh no, every mob drops some kind of an aspect when you kill them. And uh, those are these little extra balls that, that just stay there until you have a wand on your bar. And that will suck them up. I guess I could have made a... What's going on here? I guess I could have made a um, Thaumonomicon. I actually have a Thaumonomicon, I forgot. Um, found it in a village. But let me show you... The now somewhat finished spider farm. I'm really happy that it finally works. It took one and a half live streams plus an episode. So many, many hours went into this. And let me show you first on top here um, what we changed when it comes to the lighting. And that is, you guys see, there's drawbridges. There's eight drawbridges and each one of them has five glowstone in it. That is it. They were a little bit difficult to place because I needed to place them from underneath because when you place them, the, the hole where the stuff comes out of and the drawbridge faces you. And that's why I needed to do this. And down here underneath these, this block and this block are those two levers. So I just ran regular redstone, you know, because it's just cheaper. And here I needed a repeater because it was too long. But that all works now. So we have... Light in here, and we can disable these whenever we want to. And I can turn it on. That's fine. Little lag here. They all fall down, and you guys see here, um, actually Brink was the guy that said, you know, why don't you just keep the platform up there and funnel them out right there and bring them to the kill chamber instead of having them drop down and then fall in the water stream and then bring them all the way up. And the conveyor belts work really good getting these spiders out here as quick as possible. Each one of them, I see one right there. I missed it. That one right there, the cursor is slower. Dang it. It's going to drive me nuts. Um, but they have glowstone on them to be faster. And you see them coming out here. And they, they are merging. One goes out here. One goes underneath me. And they merge. I can show you guys. Uh, I got a little thing going on here. They kind of get a little bit stuck here sometimes, but they merge back there just beyond this block, just where we can see them. And then they all come up here. And this is what I came up with today. We tried to get a crushing setup down here, and I just could not get it working. 
We tried out everything. We four hour stream and we couldn't get it done. And now I decided to bring them up here and then I actually watched a old video from Armit Armitage. And I think Wooly Creeper was helping him also with that. And then I found this design here. Um, so in the end here, I just dropped them into water because the, the conveyor belts cause issues. Um, we had the, these cave spiders getting pushed through glass out on the other side because they're pushing so hard. But these right here, these three blocks, these three stone stairs, I hope you guys can kind of see them where my cursor is. Those are stone stairs and those are the key to this whole thing. And that's what I got from uh, Armitage's video. Um, and that really opened up that these spiders really go underneath and stay on the other side right here. Um, and there's nothing else underneath here. Underneath this tank is a vacuum hopper because, well, it's two blocks deep. I can not get most of the XP and the items. I did not want to use hoppers and stuff. So the XP gets pumped in this tank and the items come up here into these. And there's only three strings here. And I kind of want to wait now. Earlier, I went AFK making dinner and I came back and I had 470 cave spiders here. I got so much loot from these guys. It was bonkers. You guys are going to see. I, I'm getting all these treasure bags and everything. And I'm hoping that these ones are going to charge. And I'm going to probably have now like a 10-15 minute session here where I'm just going to kill them. But let's just see how far these ones are going to charge. They're all empty. And I made the scythe also. I totally forgot. Um, we planned on making it on the live stream, but I forgot to make it. So I made it today. It's just a steel head with all magical wood parts. Two tough rods and uh, the tough binding. And then I put on one moss first. A little bit of luck. Life steel. I wanted to have life steel on it. Because this is going to be my only weapon I'm going to use for a while now. And... Uh, sharpness. Three modifiers full of sharpness with nether quartz, which I have tons. And then I actually noticed that this thing here doesn't repair fast enough. Because you guys are going to see here uh, how fast it loses durability. So then I added a gold block and a diamond and added another um, moss to it so it repairs faster. So now let's go ahead and kill these. Um, I, I don't know where to put my levels anymore. So one hit... Two hits and a bunch of them are dead. And you guys see all these aspects here that are around me. Look at this filling. 25, 25, 5. So it, it filled the first two. What What is the aqua? Aqua, the first two are full. And I'm guessing we're not going to get any Ignis. But guess what? Where we can get Ignis? <laughs> From the Blaze Farm. One of these is a... Uh, some kind of a thumbcraft mobs, and that's why I got damaged back. So I made a bunch of levels, got three of these bags already. And look at this. Stack over a stack of spider eyes, just like that. So I'm super happy it works. I turn all these string into wool on the go whenever I have more. And that's it, guys. I'm going to spend, yeah, like I said, about a uh, good 10 minutes here to fill all these wands. And then when I have them full, I'll head over to the blaze farm and we kill a few blazes to fill them all with Ignis. And then that should be enough for us to get started when we can actually do some thumbcraft. So that was, a, like I said, about 10 minutes of farming there. It, really not a long time. We got almost four stacks of ice, two and a half stacks of wool, all these bags. And the first six, or the first five aspects and all six ones are filled. And now I had a bunch of blazes collect here. And we're going to do the same with these, and hopefully we'll get tons of Ignis. Let's see. Oh my god, so many things. I should have brought something to enchant. Alright, let's see here. This one is full, full. Alright, it filled the first two, so I got to do this three times. And then I got all the ones filled. Cool. Only 28 blaze rods. Oh well, it's fine, it's working. So that is how I'm always going to um, fill my wands in the future, in case you guys are wondering. And I'm going to fill these, and then I'll meet you back in the base. Okay, I'm back in the base, and all these wands are filled now to the rim, which is really cool. And I wanted to open these bags with you guys once, so you can see how many items that you get from the spider farm. Most of these bags are from the spider farm. 
and I can't even carry this anymore. Look at this. <laughs> Diamonds, emeralds, ender pearls, and all kinds of other gobbledygook. I, have a, I think I have a chest here. Yes, perfect. I'm going to just place this down so I can dump all this and I'm going to put it away later. But like I said, I just wanted to show you guys that's also a lot of gold. If you smelt all this up. Ooh, look at that. Golden axe. And tons of potions and stuff. It's pretty crazy, I think. Um, and we still... Ooh, golden apple. I've gotten those before. Knowledge fragments. Now let's open this one. What happened? Oh, I think there's a carpenter's block. Yep. Yeah. So look at this. 18 gold nuggets out of one. Let's open the common ones. And... Six more ender pearls. I mean, this is... This is really good, and I, I didn't, I spent so little time there. Of course, it took me a long time to build it. Wow. Six uh, gold ingots also. And let's see this one, the rare one. Meh. Not, not really that special. But I don't know, you know, what the, look at all this. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, anyways, now, before we can actually do some magic, I, I want to secure the mountaintop, okay? But I don't want to light it up. Um, I'd like to have good looking lighting up there, you know, and not torches everywhere to cover every square inch or half slabbing it or whatever. So we're going to go a different route, guys, and that has to do with immersive engineering. So we're going to get started with immersive engineering um, for parts. The first thing I'm going to make is the engineer's manual from immersive engineering book and lever. And this is a really good book if you haven't used it. Oh, my Lord, is this small. Achievement RTFM. That's funny. And it shows you everything in here. All the machines, how to set them up. For example, let's go here with heavy machinery, biodiesel. You know, it shows you what blocks you need to make and then also how to assemble it. Layer by layer. It's really good. I, I'm not too happy about how small this is for YouTube purposes because it's going to be hard for you guys to read anything here. But we have it. Um, I just wanted to get it out of the way. And I also... Already have the engineer's hammer. If I can find it, there it is. Um, I got that from a village. There's some villages now have immersive engineering houses, and this one had one in an item frame, so I got that one already. So we're gonna make some special lights. That's are these powered lanterns here. Now they, I don't know how much light they emit. I haven't really used them yet, but I read that. They block mob spawning in a 32 block radius. So I'm going to make six of these, and that should be enough to cover the entire mountaintop. We're going to have to see. I just heard some stuff over here. Mike's coming for a visit. Um, so we got these, and of course we're going to need to run um, wires from our power source to them. So I'm going to make 16 of these LV wire connectors for now. And I'm also going to make... Um, 32 of the LV cables to run to all these different ones. Because we're going to have to, you know, make a almost kind of a spider web up there. We'll see. They're not going to go bad. I just wanted to make plenty. The other thing is... What do I have here? Oh, yes. Let's make the windmill. I decided to go with a windmill. I did some testing. Um, when I'm standing on top of my mountain, I'm at Y149. And I went to a test world and put one of these up. With a kinetic generator and that produced 31 rf a tick and then i connected one of these powered lanterns and it looks like these lanterns take one rf a tick to run so one of these windmills should be enough to give us power up there even if we maybe have some little machine or something up there okay but let's make the windmill we're gonna need eight of these windmill blades and we're gonna need 32 of these tough fabrics and then if I'm not mistaken, it is like this to make improved windmill blades. We need eight of them and we surround this guy right here, which is made with a block of steel in the metal form set to extruding and that makes this shaft. So here we go. Got an improved windmill. Simple. And the other thing is now, of course, we need to make the kinetic. What is it called? Kinetic generator, I think. Oh, why can't I see it right now? Oh, there we go. The kinetic dynamo. For that one, we're going to need eight MV wire coils that are made with electrum around the treated stick. And then we'll put it around the uh, an iron ingot to make this coil. And I think the coil goes right there. And then we also need to make an MV capacitor 
Um, I don't know why we need an MV. That must be from expert mode because, while well, this generates so little power. Just little ingots, more treated wood, block of redstone. Put that in here, and we got our kinetic dino. So, I'm. It was super easy, actually. I have to say, I, I don't know why I didn't start with immersive engineering sooner. And now, let me see here. I think. Where is my? I think it's in here. But let's just take something else with us. Because I do not know what it what I want it to look like. So I'm just going to take some dirt. And I want to set this up with you guys. The windmill and one of the lanterns. And I'm actually... After I'm done with this clip here. I'm going to live stream tonight. And I want to finish with you guys on the stream. Most of this wall. And then also set up and distribute these lanterns. That's too much to show in an episode. So I figured it's going to be perfect. But I wanted to talk to you about this wall, show it now, in case a lot of it changes um, in the live stream. But what I'm going for here is I want to have a natural looking border. You guys see it goes right to the edge of the mountaintop. I leveled this all out. And I just want it up here when this is done. I want to, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, have all four of our um, magics up here. So blood magic, bombcraft... Botania and Witchery. And I think it's perfect um, to have this up here. I don't know. I, I really like this mountaintop. But of course, I don't just want it to be this here. So I'm going to replace a lot of this with dirt and grass later on. Once I have a dirt stick or something. And I also want to have colors for the different sections. So I want you guys to tell me in the comments what you guys think of this. I'd like the Thumbcraft area to have like purple lighting. I want the Botania area to have probably green lighting. Um, witchery, um, I spoke with the guys on TeamSpeak yesterday, and uh, the recommendations were either gray or brown. And Blood Magic, I think that's a, a no-brainer that's going to be red. Just so, you know, I don't want it to be shining, but when you go into that area of that magic mod, you, the lighting there is that kind of. And maybe also, you know, choose some building blocks for whatever there from those colors but overall the entire mountain here i want to be covered in a yeah a forest not a thick forest okay but you know lots of trees lots of vegetation bushes water features uh, paths in between and possibly even what i was thinking later on to have um villagers up here in a few houses or maybe even a coven witch and those kind of things you know, make it a really cool magic looking area. I hope that makes sense. Um, and first I was thinking of putting the windmill in on the edge over there, facing spawn. But then I figured, you know, I'm going to need to run wires all the way back there, back there, back there, back there. So I figured I'm going to put it right about here, somewhat in the center of this place. And then I think I can run wires because they lose um, power transmission they, they they lose a certain percentage of rf they transmit so i don't even know if it's going to be possible to run it into all of these areas but i think right here let me see it's probably a little bit further that way than this way it looks about the middle so i'm gonna just set this up right here and i decided to put it off the ground a little higher even and then maybe in the live stream we're also gonna try to figure out what kind of uh, i'd like to have when you when you see um you know like old westerns and stuff where where they have windmills it was on like a like a wooden scaffolding and stuff so i want to see if i can figure something out for this that's why right now i'm choosing dirt to set this up um let's see here how is this guy gonna place we gotta put down this kinetic dynamo and i'm guessing i want it be i want it to face that way yeah so I should probably put the dirt out this way. Because I think when I place it this way, yes. You got to hook it up to this guy right here. And up here is where we're actually going to have um, these right here. That's where the power comes out. I don't think that I can change the output to go to the bottom or anything. You can only connect this to the top. Of course, I don't want to run the wires from, you know, straight across here at this height. So they're probably going to come down to a pole right there or as far as I can go and then go span across this way. And I hope somebody actually I'm going to 
do this right here i don't want to wait for somebody to sleep because you guys see there is no torches up here when it gets night um awesome mike slept thank you mike um because when when the lights go off up here man i got blown up by creepers down on my stairway i had to fix that earlier today and that was one of the reasons i said i really want to set this up so let's put this guy here windmill for the land oh yeah oh look at this thing go cool so but ow i do want to um give me that dirt that precious dirt here my FPS just went really bad, but I've used these windmills before. We'll see. So I'm going to have to actually, I'm going to have to put a, oh, I forgot. We got to go down one more time. I, I may, I prepared some, some other things here, but we didn't craft them yet. And that's those, those posts that you can make for immersive engineering wiring. Check this out. This looks pretty cool. Dragon is starting his house down in the lake, and he's got a builder guide going. And you, uh, Brink showed us yesterday that you can change the color of them. And now we got a pink bubble in the lake. <laughs> um, so right here, we need to make a bunch of these treated wood fences. And then these we put on top of uh, stone bricks, and we get these wooden posts. So I said I'm going to make 10 of those. I don't know how much of this stuff I'll need, but... It's cheap to make. We have so much crayo seeds, so it's no problem at all. And we might even use them for decoration purposes. Who knows? So, let's see. We'll probably want to have... Yeah, what, how far is this going to be able to go? This lake and everything is going to go away later. Because I do want to rearrange this. I don't know if this is going to go this far, but let's try it out. Um, put this right there, and now I'm gonna need to get up here and put this on top. Um, you can put them as far as I know. Check this out. I learned this on Unabridged. I did not know that, but when you use the engineering's hammer and you right-click, yeah, you see that the arms come out, and then even if you take the wire connectors and put it in the bottom, it turns upside down. So that's pretty cool. I think that's you can you know. I don't know if you can do that multiple sites. No, you can only do one per level. But we don't need this guy right here. Can I turn it back? Yes, you just right click it again. So let's try to run this wire up to the windmill and see if that is gonna be able to reach it. Um, I hope it will, otherwise I'm gonna have to figure out the max distance. It worked. I like it a lot. I, I'm really happy about this. This kind of look awesome up here. I think that's perfect for the magic area because I really don't want to have, you know, a lot of fancy machines up here. So now that we got this, um, uh, it's 32 blocks. So I would probably, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that yet. Have one here, have one over there. They can be overlapping. I don't, you know, they're cheap to make these lanterns. They really are. But let's put one... Pretty straight. Let's go here. But this one, of course, I do want to have. Hmm. Let's put it this way. And let's see if we can hang this on the bottom of it. Oh, this looks awesome. I love it. And on these, you don't need a wire connector. You just click them with the wire. Ah, I bet you that's too far. Yes. You're too far. Okay. Give me that and that. So let's bring it closer to here. And do this again. And oops. Not you. Just the wire. And that works. Sweet. So now we got light and 32 block radius. Let's just count here real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 30, 32. I mean, that's perfect. So up exactly here. Out here on this block, something could spawn. But we'll we'll figure that out um, when we get to it. And of course, 
You know what? We're gonna do this right now. I know it's keep let's put one another one right here. And this one we're gonna turn to the inside. Hang another one here. I don't care. One why do I keep doing this? Give me that. So put this one and now I think we're gonna be able to connect it. No. You're too far away. Seriously? All right. Let's go to here and try it there. And this time I got the wire, not the connector. Oh, just like that. I don't know if I like that wire is so low hanging. I should almost put another post here. Go to the top of it and then come back down in an arch to over here. But something like that, guys. Like I said, I want to do this now on the live stream. And then next time I am here on the mountaintop, I'm going to be able to show you guys the entire wall and the prepared area. And then we can actually set up our botany. I do want to get this done today. Um, but I'll be It is time to show you guys what we came up with. I'm really, really excited. I love it. Ooh, the great wood just grew. I just planted this a minute ago. Because I wanted to see if how that's going to look like. But check it out. This is what we came up with for the windmill. We, we had all kinds of different ideas on what to do. But I kept it very simple and I love it. Um, and we also spoke about possibly putting some support wires. But I am worried that that would be too much. Because I already have three wires going off that. And I, I really like the way it looks. I, I really dig it. Um... I planted a grapefruit tree over here. These are the bamboos. Um, we got a bunch of mycelium with the silk touch pick that I made. Um, I'm gonna go into the pick and the charging and everything next episode because we're gonna build a couple more machines next time. Um, we continued the wall all the way to here and over there because that's kind of like the natural border right now of the things that I still need to flatten out and fill in and so on right here so it just goes to here um we went on a lily pad hunt got a bunch of those now all these these lower uh, sugar canes you guys see right here it says string they're capped off with string because i don't want them to grow any further any taller i want them to be looking you know natural like this i really like how this turned out that, that was a great idea you guys gave me um and this is probably my favorite part right here that we did i it, it popped into my head that I wanted to pick up a coven witch and bring it up here because I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but over here, this area is going to be our Botania area because Botania doesn't need as much area and we can fit everything we need into this part. All this over here is going to be Thomcraft. And then be behind this witch's circle, this way, we're going to put our witchery area right there. And then over here is going to be blood magic because blood magic needs the biggest uh, footprint. So I should be able to fit this over here. Um, and uh, Mike found or remembered in a village where here Melinda Drelling Court was living. And I invited her to stay over with me. <laughs> um, the safari nets don't work. Um, neither the single use nor the reusable. And so we went over there and got it in a minecart and got it into the nether. And then I think it was Rex in the, in the stream said, try out a golden lasso. And then I think TJ's had one on him. Yes. And picked it up. So that worked. You can pick up coven, which is with a golden lasso. So it was easy to come up here and we built one of these witch circles here or rebuilt one. And then decorated it. I This is mycelium I added today with the mushrooms. Because I don't know, witchery has a lot to do with mushrooms to me. Um, the vine idea is from Brink. And I need to stop them from spreading. Um, they're spreading too far. So I'm probably going to have to put like string here and string there. I don't think then it can go around the corner. Um, yeah, this is spreading a lot. I only had one here and it's already overtaken, but I'll I'll put string around here to fix this up and down here We put a smoker Because um, it looks really cool like this witch is brewing something right here and um, this was a a stone fence 
I don't have any on me from Railcraft. It's out of stone bricks, and we had cobble and um, what is this one called here? The cracked stone brick fence and so on. But it took away from the witch's circle. It blended in too much. It was too much stone brick. So this morning I tore all this down and then replaced it with carpenter's barrier and hammered it to this look. And I really like this. I think that looks really cool. Guess ever built a project and then, you know, there's two ways. Sometimes you just don't feel it. You're like, eh, I'm going to keep going. You know, maybe when it comes together, it's going to look good. But this one right here is, I love it. I love everything we've built so far. Of course, you know, all this is going to be grass here. Um, but I... That's just a lot of work. I just wanted to make sure the Botania area is ready for today. So, and one more thing over here, because we're going to need a lot of seeds for Botania, right? And so I got down in the, in, in, in our farms down at spawn, um, I found 10, 10, 10 clippings in, in Dragon's mailbox. And so I planted two of them up here and check it out. You know, now we got eight pumpkins. And I got 32 seeds, so I, I don't need to worry about seeds. They're always going to be up here, so I can just use that. So, now let's set this guy up here. The Petal Apothecary, I just built this. Um, super easy recipe. Um, the cauldron you need to make with the metal former, the plates, and you just need double compressed cobblestone. But it's it's quite simple. And I made another world interaction upgrade, so I wanted to set this up. Where are we going to put this? I think our work area... We are going to put, hmm, why not right here? I think that's a good place right here. Yeah, let's put it right here next to to this. And then we, if we ever need power for something, Botania, I can come from here. Yeah, that's a good place right there. So let's go make the water source first down here. Have water on me? Yes, I do. So let's put... One right there, and another one right there. I wanted to thank everybody that showed up in the stream yesterday and helped me out with all these ideas. It was really a lot of fun again. I've been having a lot of fun streaming, let me tell you guys. Can I have this, please? Come here. Oh, by the way, I have not mentioned it yet. I got a, a, a ring of magnetization. TJ's made a bunch for everybody on the server and handed them out, so thank you very much, TJ's. That is awesome, even though we cannot um, make it ourselves yet. I think it's okay. I really dig it um, that I have one end. So you don't fill, huh? Dang it. I thought that you can fill these. Let's see here real quick. If I put it next to it. No, it doesn't connect at all. Oh, that's a bummer. I... I, I, I thought that they work by now, but apparently not. So let's close this again, and I guess... Oh, come on. Give me that. We're just going to use the... The regular water right over here, so I just need to walk over to there. I think that's going to be fine. And because I don't need that, let's see here. I think I'm going to put it... In the ground. Um like that. I do like the pedal apothecary in the ground because then it's just easier to see. And I gotta sleep. Nobody's sleeping for me. Okay, and it's morning. Put this away again. Don't need you. Too bad. So sad. Um, I guess I'm gonna leave one bucket here now. And, you know, we're just gonna have that on the ground. Whoops. Right there. Something like that. So now, the first flower, of course, we're gonna have to make is the um, pure daisy. And that's very simple to make. And I'm gonna get rid of this so I can hold onto the bucket. It's just four white petals and a seed. And then in case you're not familiar... What? What? All right, that was weird. Huh. Why did you... All right, I think that this grass needs to go away so I can reach this here easier. All right, um, in case you're not familiar with this, if you just did a recipe and then you shift right click with an empty, uh, no, just right click, what? Did I miss the deadline? There's only a short timer for you to redo a recipe, but it usually just with an empty hand, you right click this again 
And then this grass also needs to go away. Um, right click with an empty hand to add back the last recipe. I thought that's... Yeah, we can't do it because I only have two. But yeah, that's how it works if I make a lot of them. So now we got two pure daisies. And we're going to put them. Where are we going to put these? We should put one... No, let's not hide them too much. Let's put them right here. I think, yes. And let's go out one. So one, one, two, one, two. I want to have a little... Distance between them. I usually bunch them up next to each other, but this time I'm gonna leave one break and I forgot to bring some wood and stone All right, so now let's make first a bunch of Living wood um, you simply place any kind of vanilla wood around these pure daisies and you see these particle effects that we're getting now And then it's going to turn into living wood in just a few seconds I think while we wait for this wood to turn, we can make the day blooms that we're gonna need today. And that is with yellow petals, orange petals, and light blue petals. So let's put all this on the bar and put the seed over here. And I think it is two, one, one. Yes, it is. There we go. And now we can fill this and take the hoe off. And now just check it out. I see, I right clicked it. And now all you get to do is add the seed. And it is very fast to make them this way. And let's do all the other ones. And here's the last one. Don't need the bucket right now. I rebound it um, and I keep pressing the wrong thing. So let's harvest this now. Now the thing with the day blooms is, I'm sure you're familiar with them by now, that they now wither away after 20 minutes. So I'm gonna make sure that we have everything ready for this cycle. So we're gonna have the mana pool up and so on. And then as soon as that is filled, it should give us enough so we can make um, some endo flames. And I noticed in the recipes here, check it out. It used to be that you can only make the diluted mana pool with regular living root, not the slabs. And then you needed to toss that into a mana pool to make it a regular mana pool. But there's a recipe for this now. So I don't think we'll need to do that anymore, but we'll test it in a second. Um, I need a crafting table that I'd like to leave here. We're gonna put that guy right next to this, just like that. So, what are we going to do with this living wood first? And that is make a three twigs. And I'm going to... Oh, I have the petals here. I want it to go white and blue. Put those. Just like that. And we got our one of the forest. That's, you know, the ranch of Botania. That we'll need. And I'm just going to fill this up. So it looks nicer. We got everything here. Perfect timing. This now flies around i always wait a second longer guys um before i harvest it because i've had it in the past if there's a little bit server lag it rendered on your game for some reason and then when you break it you got regular stone back even though it showed you that there is living rock but luckily everything worked here so let's see if we can make a regular mana pool that's awesome that you don't need to do this other way anymore vivid wave oh yeah all right, so we got eight of these fellas. And you go over here. I'm just gonna... Hmm. I do want to have this somewhere over here. So let's just put the mana pool... Right there. Okay. Get out of here. These are all from watering canning uh, the area for it to spread the... Um, the grass quicker. And what are we going to put here? I think for right now, oh yes, of course, I still need to make one more thing. And that is, we need to make, ah, uh, I must have left that gold ingot down there when I emptied my bags. All right, so now I got the gold ingot. Now we can make our first mana spreader. Um, just like that. Regular recipe, and we're just gonna put this right here for now, like that. And then with an empty, with the thing um, selected, when you shift right click, you can switch between function and bind mode. And I wanna have bind mode, 
you shift right click this guy and then shift right click the mana pool so now you guys see this it's tied to this mana pool and now we're just going to place these uh, regular rules apply you cannot have these directly next to each other so you're going to have to make them set them up diagonally just like that and there we go and that's going to be hopefully enough and now this is something that i've noticed here that i've never seen before oh yeah they do okay i thought that now you always need to tie them directly after you place them to the spreader but apparently if you put the spreader down first and then the flowers they automatically tie so here we go we got some mana going now i think i'm gonna wait this out guys until the day blooms are completely used up and we'll see how much mana we get from that so i'm not sure where the 20 minute myth is coming from here um it's been close to an hour guys that these real life hours that this these are still here so i figured and that's something we gotta do anyway i don't know why i haven't done it yet we're gonna make a lexica botania and actually read up what the book says so that's how you make the lexica botania and i think that if i shift right click here we go you can directly open to that page for anything that is botania related uh the slow there's passive flowers which mean will they decay after some use hmm it doesn't really tell us how long it takes, but <laughs> I mean, I got all this mana, so I guess we're going to go ahead and make our endo flames while we wait for this. And I'm going to toss five of these in there and cut five of them. And now I want to try something because if we have enough mana for the iron, that would be amazing. If we can make two mana steel. Yes, that is cool because now what we can do is make three more of these i was kind of hoping to get this done today for that and now i gotta go back to right there and i want to make a mana distributor so we got one of these and now what i can do here let's see do i want to have it here no i'd rather have it back here so i got a little more room over here i am not gonna set it up just yet because this guy is gonna have issues but um, we can then pump. I, I, what I want to do is I want to put the endo flames back here. Okay. And then actually pump the mana over to here. But I think we're going to have to have a, a uh, what do you call it? A, brr, not a, not a intersection. Come on. What's the, a relay. A relay in between so we can shoot it a little further do I have another pedal on me just the ones I need for the crafting let me get one of these and we're gonna need another gold uh, we're gonna make that right now while we wait I, I wanted to finish this quite quickly so I can finally uh, edit this episode because you guys can probably see it's been a long time um, and, but I don't want to move this stuff until the day blooms are done. I don't know what happens if I break these day blooms right now to place them somewhere else. I'm not sure. But what we can do, guys, what in the meantime is I want to make um, living rock brick. And I want to transform these into this right here, the chiseled living rock bricks. I think they look cool. And of course, I forgot another piece um but that's no problem i need to get a another carpenter's wedge because i don't like to have my mana spreaders on the ground i don't know it's just me and i have an idea on what looks pretty good i think this is what i need so we're just gonna set up the back area and while we wait for this i want to test today if the end of flames can pick up charcoal from two blocks under the ground because i would like to hide my automation i don't want to have these big towers with oh they're gone finally oh that's cool check it out it turned into dead bushes finally that sounds horrible but i'm happy that it finally did so we can continue this what i wanted to test is if i can you know suck up the charcoal from down there and 
I wanted to show you guys this cut through here from the side so you, I can better explain how this is going to work. In this one right there, we're going to put our charcoal. Okay, so check it out. Let's not use a whole stack here, but let's just put five of these in there for right now. My magnet is off. You see, the first one won't fall down, and it's waiting now to get sucked up. The other four are still in here, okay? Because the lock, the hopper is locked. This pressure plate powers this repeater, powers this redstone, which powers this block, which locks the repeater. Or it's probably powering both blocks. Yeah. And instead of having the tower behind it and have that stuff up in the air, I want to hide it in the ground this time. So uh, now the only question is, can the endo flame pick this up? So we're going to have to test this. Let me still touch a piece of grass here real quick. And I would have them one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to put the grass right here. I'm running out of room right there and close the hatch all right cool so we got the mana over here now i can move this guy and get rid of this and we can make um the end of flames so it's gonna be do this this that let me get this out of here all right so that should be everything so let's put one one two one one and of course i'll need my gonna be out of room now oh i have the seats on me there they are and one of these cool so that is how you make this now i'm gonna take this out so i have an empty hand and i can just right click it again put the seat and so on and the last one is done very cool now i got room in the inventory let's put water in here again and get rid of the bucket and i am going to test this out right here now before i even try to plant this over there Let's see if this one can reach that charcoal down there. And I think it's not going to work because there's no spreader. So let's put a spreader right there. I think they need to be connected. Yeah, this one is not in my... I think I'm in bind mode. So bind to here. Yes, it does. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to put the distributor right there. And we're going to put the other three mana pools around it. And there's a king slime down in Nicole's farm stuck. A little silly that you see them all the way up here, the name. But it doesn't really bother. You know, but if I look away from it, I should not see. Oh, there it goes. Okay. But only if I turn that way. All right. It's okay. So we're going to have this over here. And like I said, I want to put the mana set up back here. So let's say we'll dig down right there. And I'm going to put the hopper behind it. So, because of course, you know, we can have all kinds of stuff fall in there. And then that would mess up the area. So these five are going to be right here. And where do I want the... I think we're going to put down the crate. So nobody can see it. It's hidden. So don't tell anybody about it. We're going to put this on top. And this, and then decorate it with this block. Why isn't anybody sleeping on the server anymore? Thank you, Toddy. Really appreciate it. So this is right there. And now we're going to put a... I can shift it up there. Mana spreader on top. I kind of like this kind of setup. So it looks like, you know, it's held up into the air. And then down here, we're going to have this. And then I'm going to guess I want to have another setup here. Because I think that's too long. But the important thing for that is, guys, that you need to have. And for that one, we're just going to put this. I need to make another mana pool. That you do never go directly from mana spreader into mana spreader. Because you lose mana. But if you go from mana spreader into mana pool. And then have another spreader on top of that. Um, sucking that out, you don't have any mana loss, okay? I, it's really important. Now we tie this one to the distributor, and it will um, fill all four of these mana pools equally. And this one here, we tie to this mana pool. It looks like, okay. 
So now if I have other mana generating flora, you know, and I have maybe something over here later or something over here, I can always just come directly together, that kind of thing. You know, later, of course, we're going to have some mana lenses and so on, but that is for a later day. Now I have to just make some room down here real quick. All right. So right underneath this is going to be the pressure plate. And then, yes, the repeater going that away. And right here, we'll have this with a redstone dust going into we can yeah, we need a block here so they can never fall off and the block here yes that's how we did it and then the hopper goes into here and now i can hide this all oops wrong one and wrong one we need the grass over here and nobody can see it it's nicely put away you know you don't know where is he getting his car call from? How's he doing that? <laughs> nah, I'm just messing with you. So, and now we put the five endoflames right here. They're all tied, right? Yes, yes, yes. I hope that the one mana spreader can handle this. And put all the charcoal in there. And there's one, two, three, four, five. They're all gone. And we're getting tons of mana. Is this awesome or what? So this is all the botania we're going to do for right now because I just want to fill these up. But we are not all done yet. Almost, guys. Um, we're going to need three mana glass. One, two, three. And now we can actually finally... I think it works like this. No, that's not it. Oh, I forgot, the, I forgot a clay. Uh, that requires a clay ball to make the file so we can finally make the scribing tools or thumbcraft because while i get this let me explain something i'm i'm gonna set it up now and then that's going to be the end of the episode but i'm going to then set something up and make a where's my clay here it is I'm going to make an extra episode where i only show how i scan to unlock all the aspects that we can unlock usually i always goes like all right guys here we go now i got the thermometer and we just get this by the way the materials for that um there we go um two gold two shards and usually i just say you know i'm gonna sh just scan now i'm i'm not gonna bother you guys because well it is quite boring right this is not it this and let's just take which one do i have the most earth let's take two earth um ooh takes another mana glass yes oh i'm so glad i came down so again i usually just say you know I'm, I'm gonna show you guys um afterwards of what i researched and so on but a lot of people i think lose interest in thumbcraft because they don't know how to scan the things to unlock all the aspects it can be quite annoying to figure that out even with all the help out there in the internet a lot of times it's not updated so i said i'm going to make an episode it shouldn't be I'm going to say max 10 minutes and I'm just going to prepare all the items. We're going to scan them. And then I'm also going to show you what we need to um, combine in the research table to make the actual aspects that you are either very hard to find or you can't scan. Okay. So look forward to that video. I think it's going to be really cool to show that. And I hope it helps you guys. And I'll need D3 and I need a wand. So it doesn't really matter where I put this right now because we still need to uh, update the, the design up here. But I thought for right now, I'm just going to put it here. So it's out of the way. So put two tables and put another table. This one table here, we are going to right click with a wand. And now we have our arcane work table. Okay. And this one right here, we click with describing tools. And this is what we'll need so we can combine aspects. These right here, I got by just existing in the world. And I think, I don't know why they're not equal numbers. I don't know. But anyway, so, and I got the thermometer. I'm not going to scan anything right now. I'm going to wait until the special episode and we're going to scan everything and lock, unlock everything. And that is it. And I think we got a really nice setup up here. Um, I'm digging it. Let me know how you guys like it. And if you have any other ideas of 
what we could add here. For example, I had the idea to maybe put a few little houses up here for villagers. Just for fun, you know, so it looks a little lively. And But that is it for today, guys. Super long episode, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in uh, the next one. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.